What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're going to continue the forging series with a, a pretty cool build. So this is going to be a forge to finish blacksmith knife. Now Elijah over at Fire Creek Forge suggested this particular build and thought it would be a good idea for the series. I agreed with him so I decided to go ahead and make this one but go the whole forge to finish design and all the work on it would be just with hand tools no 2x72 or anything like that i think it's gonna be pretty cool and of course if you've seen the thumbnail you know it turns out pretty cool but y'all go ahead sit back relax watch the video enjoy it and then we'll talk more in the outro
So I wanted to try something on this. I knew there was going to be a layer of decarb on the actual cutting edge, but I wanted to go ahead and just file that off, and then I would stop filing as soon as it started skating the file. And that's what happened. We, we filed it down less than a sixteenth of an inch, and we are already at hardened steel. And I mean, 65 HRC test file right there. Just skating that whole entire edge. So we are definitely hardened. Now we just need to go through, temper it, and get that part done. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up with the talking part of the Shop Talk Tuesday, where I discuss, you know, the takeaways and the thought processes that went into making a particular build like this. Now, for one, the whole point behind this build was I put in the end of the last Shop Talk Tuesday in the outro section saying, hey, what should I make next? Give me a suggestion. And Elijah over at Far Creek Forge said, hey, you should make a blacksmith knife because I think that would go good with this particular series. And I said, you know what? That would. So I decided to make a blacksmith knife. Now, the difference between this one and some of the ones that I've seen on YouTube is I wanted to do a forge to finish blacksmith knife. So I wanted to actually completely forge in the bevels all the way down to the cutting edge. I wanted to forge in the guard. I wanted to only use basically hammer, anvil, forge, files. I did use a TS Prof to put the actual final edge on it, but everything was done by hand. There was no machinery that touched this particular build. Now, with the different things I wanted to do, I wanted to get nice, smooth bevels in there, fully forged in all the way from a thicker spine down to that nice, thin cutting edge. We did do a full distal taper all the way through that blade there to get a nice thin tip. And then we did a drop point design. I did forge in a guard. So this little area right here is flared, flared out. And I think that that's really cool. 
it's centered real well on the actual blade. And I saw this in a video a while back and I thought, I kind of want to do that on this particular build. So I went ahead and forged that in. Now with this, I didn't want to end up doing like a twist or anything like that. I wanted a nice comfortable handle that fit my hand because I do plan on using this knife inside the shop because I mean, why not? And then one of the things that I did do was just make sure everything was nice, even and smooth. And during the forging process, I focused on initially singling out the area for the tang and then going ahead and focusing on the blade, then coming back to the tang and then smoothing everything out and then finalizing the tang. Now, the whole point behind what I was going to do here is I knew that I needed X amount of steel to be able to forge in that tang. So that's why I isolated it first. And then I went into the blade profile, just kind of set the preform and then got some bevels done and got the, the bevels and then the spine and then got the distal taper put in there, just refined enough so that I could hold it and then focus on getting the tang drawn out and then switch back holding the blade or holding the tang here and starting to finalize that blade. You know, and during that process, I did go ahead and hand file the spine there just to make sure we had a nice smooth swoop down there. And then we did the rest with forging and all that. But definitely like this. I like the copper wrap. I like the lanyard with the little turquoise beads on there and everything. I put these turquoise beads on a lot of my, my builds. I did the lanyard with the, the loop here to be able to put it on any of the hooks that are in my shop. This shop and that shop so I can just hang it there whenever I'm not using it. Now, of course, I do plan on making a sheath for this, and I'll probably go ahead and carry it like that, and then whenever it's not being carried, it'll be hung on a wall. <laughs> but I like this. I'm happy with this build. I think it has just enough, you know, punch of color and pop, and then, of course, nice little guard there. But pretty cool for a build made out of just the end of a leaf spring. And that was the whole point behind that. I wanted to take something that was just absolutely not blade shaped and then turn it into a nice edge tool blade that will work. Guys, do y'all like this one? Do y'all think that this was the right way to, to go on a particular blacksmith knife? Actually doing everything by forging as opposed to grinding in the bevels and doing all that stuff. Do y'all like it? You like the copper, you like the lanyard. If you do, let me know. I'm always interested to hear from y'all and get feedback. Plus, I would love to have one of y'all suggest another build. So what do you think we should make next? Who knows, I might pick that one as the next build. See how it goes. So put it down in the comment section. What do you think I should make next? And then we'll go from there. Guys, that's the end of this video. If you would, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is free, thumbs ups are free. Yeah. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.